Decontamination is a combination of processes including cleaning, disinfection and or sterilisation used to render reusable surgical instruments safe for further use. Improving decontamination forms an important part of the Chief Medical Officer's strategy to combat healthcare related infections. Providing patients with a safe environment of care requires a high level of compliance and recommended hygiene policies and appropriate cleaning and disinfection of medical equipment and environmental surfaces. In this programme we speak to Derek Butler, Chairman of MRSA Action UK, an organisation set up for the purpose of raising public awareness about healthcare infections. We also hear from leading infection control innovators, Deacon Solutions, CK Cleaning Group and Lancer UK Limited, who talk about their innovations and services designed to provide patients with a safe environment of care. A hospital superbug is a bug that is very hard to treat. There are many hospital superbugs, MRSA, Clostridium difficile, VRE, GRE, and there are numerous ones in hospitals. However, MRSA is the one that is well known at the moment um, in the public domain and in hospitals and around the world. When we mention swabs, uh, if we're talking about swabs to take a, a, a test for an infection, then we need to have that sterile so it picks up the bacteria and we, we can get a, a picture of what's on the swab. If we're talking of bandages, then that's different. We need to ensure that those bandages that are put on, <clears throat> put onto those bandages that are put onto a patient, help to kill the bacteria, um, because it's critical that it doesn't get into a wound. Um, there are several things that can be used as silver technology. There is uh, using uh, ionising agents. There's even using the fact of nanotechnology. But using the actual swab itself it has to be clean and it has to be sterile so we can get an actual reading to see if there's a bacteria on it so with swabs i would say that needs to be left alone and left sterile decon solutions are a company that's um, been formed after 27 years worth of experience working in the decontamination field in healthcare environments so whether there's a decontamination challenge around a medical device surgical instruments or environments those are the sorts of things that we like to uh, get involved with, talk to people about and offer our experience. So whether it's an endoscopy department, a sterile services department, outpatients, operating theatres and certainly um, more of late podiatry, um, chiropody centres and dentistry are things that we find we're becoming more and more involved in. Challenges today facing um, healthcare um, environments are more and more challenging every day really. Um, in the past couple of years there's been greater emphasis on um, monitoring standards and implementing systems to ensure that there's a, a, a contribution certainly uh, to a reduction in healthcare acquired infections. Um, legislation, national guidance, um, the Audit Commission, the um, National Institute for Clinical Excellence, the Medical Devices Directive, um, the Health and Social Care Act are all things that have come about based on many aspects of, of healthcare provision but there's certainly major challenges within those um, documents and within those particular uh, elements that face decontamination services. The problems we've got of course within healthcare is continuously being able to find acceptable standards ensure that people who are involved in those systems um, are competent, um, ensure that training is available, ensure that adequate resources are available and also that from an environmental point of view the conditions and the systems that are in place uh, continuously conform to those standards. What we like to do is we like to work with um, senior healthcare managers, infection control specialists, decontamination managers or anyone who's involved in, in, in those systems um, to offer and also to discuss what solutions are right for those individuals and for those individual um, facilities. Of course bearing in mind that they always have to be compliant with 
national and international standards. Products we, we're offering are a, a range of products from hands-on management of decontamination services, whether that be in an endoscopy department or a sterile services department, through to um, managing the processes, designing systems, implementing quality systems. We can also offer a, a continuous monitoring system. We have key performance indicators, which allow senior healthcare um, management trust boards to ensure and be satisfied that they have continuous um, risk management and also allowing, of course, the, the, the compliance solutions that they, they source. Um, other things that we're, we're involved in are also um, training programmes, whether that be at management level or whether that be at senior sort of supervisory level or, more importantly, um, at a technician level where people actually coming into the service and learning about decontamination systems for the first time. It's a very scientific, very challenging, very technical area. And um, sometimes that has to be managed very carefully so that people aren't daunted and aren't challenged too quickly with too much of the science behind decontamination. All of the products and services that we offer um, have been designed with all of the legislation all of the, the major decontamination documents, guidance documents um, in mind. Now simply that's, that's based on um, the, the current trend and certainly the current demands on decontamination uh, of medical devices within the UK. Um, of course there's European legislation and there's international um, legislation that affect how we do things in the UK. So what we've done at Decon Solutions is take all of that, um, all of those document requirements, all of the challenges in there, and all of the experience that the personnel at Decon Solutions have through 26, 27 years worth of working within healthcare, um, and the knowledge and skills that the people at Decon Solutions have in order to be able to design either bespoke systems or systems that we already have in place, which can be generalised or generic systems um, across special or the specialties of decontamination um, areas, whether that be in an endoscopy department or a sterile services department, or whether um, a podiatrist uh, clinic um, and the challenges that they're certainly facing these days um, uh, want, to, want to have a look at how they can find a solution. All of the products and services are compliant with many of the, the, the documents and guidance and legislation that um, affects decontamination within the UK healthcare settings. Um, the Joint Assessment Group, purely focusing on endoscopy, uh, has many challenges and um, we're quite um, focused on that when we, when we look at endoscopy services. The um, British Society of Gastroenterologists recommendations around decontamination of flexible, ne um, flexible endoscopes and also the British Association of um, Otto Rhino Laryngology um, is also now heavily focused and, and, and looking at certainly decontamination of flexible nasendoscopes endoscopes uh, in ENT outpatients departments. We've got the Medical Devices Directive which has affected sterile services departments certainly quite heavily over the last 10 years. And we've also got National Institute for Clinical Excellence requirements Patients Association monitoring um, and the Health and Social Care Act, which basically overpins or underpins um, most, if not all, of um, the healthcare standards within the healthcare settings in the UK. And certainly there's a huge element uh, within that document around decontamination standards and practice. What we find is, of course, we've mentioned um, all of the challenges. For, for, for healthcare environments and, and trust boards and, and various um, uh, facilities. Th th there are many, many challenges coming out of these documents. Now, because Decon Solutions have been involved in um, these things for, for, for many years, and of course we're, we're, we're fully up to date with what the requirements are of these challenges, it's very easy for us to sit down and talk to, um, to customers, our future customers or prospective customers, and um, talk about the easy solutions there are available to um, various organisations because we fully understand the implications of what these documents are looking for. Um, at times, there are a lot of changes required 
at times mainly only minimal changes required. But it's about assessing where, where you are now and it's also about looking at where you need to get to. Now Decon Solutions, of course, um, as I've previously mentioned, have the experience, have the knowledge, have the competencies. Um, and um, I'll emphasise experience again, um, to find the, the suitable solutions and answers to the challenges of those documents. One of the biggest benefits um, that Decon Solutions can offer is um, the resource of solutions already available to healthcare facilities. What major challenges that um, people find, of course, is that these documents uh, are quite demanding, they're very technical, they're very specialised, um, resources are required um, and additional resources on top of resources are required. Decon Solutions can offer potential customers um, a huge time-saving element which of course has an effect on the overall cost. Um, the systems that we have are effective, they're compliant and also um, they're easy to manage whether internally by the um, establishments or the environments themselves or by Decon Solutions managing those solutions and systems for the customers. We named the company Decon Solutions for a reason because we've got solutions to decontamination problems. We can offer any healthcare environment those solutions to comply with the requirements of the standards, the legislation and any guidance documents. They place huge burdens on time, money, resources within healthcare settings which would be much more effective on direct patient care. Therefore, we can save those establishments the time, the money and the resources um, by giving them the solutions that are tried and tested in today's healthcare environments. What we have to remember is that decontamination compliance is not an option, it's mandatory. There's been much said about the deep clean that was introduced in 2007-8. However, using steam on its own is not good enough. Steam will not get rid of all the bacteria because some of the bacteria can actually stand high temperatures. Um, we've, we've come across bacteria that can stand heats of two, 300 degrees centigrade. So you need something in with the steam, such as an antimicrobial or a biocide or a, a, a bleaching agent. The usual one is hydrogen peroxide that they use within the steam. Um, but steam on its own will not do the job that we want it to do. Yes, it'll make something look clean, but it won't sterilise or disinfect on its own. It was approximately a year ago that the government launched the initiative for the deep cleaning programme. The budget for this was approximately £50 million and it was to cover all hospital trusts across the UK. Each trust took it on their own demands, how they, how they spent the money, uh, whether they brought private contractors in or whether they carried it out in-house. CK Group have been trading in the cleaning industry for over 30 years. IDCS is the newest division of the CK Group, it stands for Intensive Deep Cleaning Systems. And what it does, it brings together proven technologies or cleaning technologies to provide one deep cleaning service for a healthcare environment. We've brought proven technologies such as air, air, air management, microfiber, ultrasonics, dry steam vapour, all together so that we can clean hospital wards, operating theatres, any department within the healthcare environment. Once a piece of equipment is cleaned and decontaminated, we tag it with a tag such as this which on the back has got the, the area, whether it be a ward or department, together with the date it was cleaned and the operatives who cleaned it, signature and printed name. This then gives the hospital an asset tracking system of when and where that piece of equipment was cleaned so they can then decide how often they wish it be cleaned, whether it be six monthly, yearly, monthly, whatever's in their budgets. I'd like to talk about two systems that we use within the deep cleaning procedure in the, uh, within the healthcare environment at the moment. One of those is dry steam cleaning, the other is ultrasonic cleaning. Dry steam cleaning uh, has been around now for 20 years and there's nothing new about dry steam cleaning. The difference in the system that we use is the attachments that go on the end of the steam hose. These have been specifically designed for the healthcare environment uh, to decontaminate uh, a bed, a patient's bed, drip stands, commodes, practically any, any piece of equipment within the healthcare environment. The ultrasonic cleaning is a totally different and uh, a fairly new 
type of technology within the healthcare environment. Although ultrasonics has been around for 40 years now, it was first invented with, with the atom bomb, it was used for cleaning the atom bomb. We're now starting to bring it into uh, the healthcare environment, dipping commodes, dipping large, larger pieces of equipment such as wheelchairs, decontaminating them, and then putting them back on the, on, on the hospital wards, giving the patients a good feel factor about all the equipment. Another product that we provide for our clients at the CK Group is a training program specific, specifically for intensive deep cleaning. Um, we use all the systems, all the, all the machinery which we've spoken about earlier on and put these all together for in-house teams. Some hospital trusts don't like using contractors so we'll send teams in to train the in-house teams. My message to the NHS is simple. We've come a long way in a short time in killing bacteria or controlling bacteria in our hospitals. However, the easy part has now been done. We've attained that 50% that was set by John Reed in 2005. The next 50% will be even harder to attain because you're getting closer to zero. Now, we're not going to attain zero infections, but we believe you can, re you can attain what we call the irreducible minimum. That means you get it down to a level where you can't get it any lower. But our message to the NHS and the staff is simple. Work with us. We can help you because we've had the experience of what it's like to contract a healthcare infection. We know the effect it's had on families. And I always give an example. It's like somebody dropping a pebble in a pond. When you drop a pebble, that first initial splash is what I call the infection. And then you get the ripples going out from that splash. And that's the effect it has on the patient, the families, the staff, the economy, on our society. And we have to start thinking about, are we really doing enough with regard to healthcare infections? But our message is, work with us. Let us help you to reduce those infections. Because we both have that vested interest. You as the medical staff, we as the patient's representatives. Lancer UK is the market leader in automated endoscope reprocessing. We make not only reprocessors for endoscopes, but we also make drying and storage cabinets for endoscopes and autoclaves for sterilising theatre-based instruments. We're part of the Gettinger Group, which is the leading global equipment manufacturer within infection control. It's generally considered that infection levels within endoscopy are quite low in comparison to a lot of other areas of, of medical procedures. This is mainly because when you're doing an endoscopy procedure on a patient, you're going into a body cavity that you're not going to get an infection from, such as the stomach, which already has acid in it, which is, is going to kill any bugs that go in there. Also, another procedure that's done in endoscopy is a colonoscopy, which goes into the bowel. And obviously, there are a lot of germs, bugs, what have you, in the bowel anyway. Where predominantly infection comes from, in relation to endoscopy is more to do with the decontamination of the scopes themselves. Endoscopes have numerous channels. Um, they, they have the channels that you can actually access with regard to cleaning brushes, but there are also um, water channel um, aspiration and um, little air channels that you, you cannot access to clean with a brush. You can flush them through with water, but you can't actually access them so therefore, the, the chemicals you're using, the equipment that you're using to clean them manually, and also the machines, the automated endoscope reprocessors that you place your scope in, have to be absolutely top-notch in order to access these dinky little channels. So in a machine such as the ones manufactured by Lancer, they have various different coloured hoses which you're attaching to every single channel of your scope so that every part of the scope is exposed to chemical um, and is decontaminated to an extremely high standard. And this in turn does prevent any potential infection occurring within the patient. Obviously what also has to be considered in relation to the patient is their actual medical condition. If they're extremely ill already, if they have um, a condition a diagnosis such as cancer, they're automatically going to be a, a slightly higher risk with regard to infection, possibly with regard to bleeds. So everything else has to be taken into consideration, the, the, the procedure that's being done, the condition of the patient, but also the level of decontamination. Lancer products are mainly automated endoscope reprocessors and also endoscope storage drying cabinets. 
The um, processors are anything from what we call an FC2 or an FC4. FC standing for fibro cleaner. And the fibro, cleaners t fibro cleaner twos um, will only take two endoscopes at any one time. The fibro cleaner fours will take four scopes at any one time. Um, whichever hospital, wh whichever machine that a hospital wants really depends on their throughput, um, the size of the room that they have, and so on and so forth. Um, the drying cabinets will store up to eight endoscopes at any one time for up to between 72 hours and seven days, but a lot of that will depend on local hospital policies to what they choose, what they choose to do. Um, other products that we provide are transportation trolleys, which are trolleys that will, they're on wheels and they'll take up to, I think it's about five or six scopes. And the idea being, rather than actually carrying a scope, and an endoscope is worth anything from £15,000 up to £85,000. If you're carrying a piece of kit like that around, the risk of damage is extremely high. So you have to have proper baskets and trolleys to transport them in. Um, the, also, thinking about moving and handling, damage to your back, damage to your shoulders, you've got to be very, very careful about moving them around. So the trolley will transport from the machine to the drying cabinet or to the procedure room or to a different department, depending on how the hospital layout is set up with regard to decontamination. The other consumables that we provide are the, the specific connectors for each scope, um, hoses, anything, really anything that the, that the client actually needs. The services that Lancer UK provide are very extensive. We, we provide service contracts. Um, the service contract includes engineers. We have 50 engineers at least 50 engineers across the country in all regions so that should there be a problem, a breakdown, a f one phone call and an engineer should be there within 24 hours um, because there'll be one in the locality. The engineers also provide um, the validation, validation of the machine. What that means is they'll go in at three monthly intervals, six monthly and yearly and do validation tests on the machines to make sure that the machine is doing what we say it does and to the standards of HTM 2030, which is what we obviously adhere to. Um, the training of the machines, training is incredibly important for using these machines. Um, HTM 2030, HTM 0106 states that training is imperative for, for using these machines. You, you cannot use one unless, unless you've had the proper training from the manufacturer, i.e. Us. The Lancer Academy was founded because it was identified that there was a need for training, more extensive training, to take place. Before the machines were installed, the engineer who installed the machines would train the nurses how to use them, and then th that would be it. They would carry on and they would use the machines. What was being found was that there was a lot of call-outs, a lot of problems. The engineers would be revisiting and revisiting. And when there wasn't actually a problem with the machine itself, it was more likely to be a user error. So with that, that need identified, the Academy was founded by my colleague Helen Ashwell, who um, put together workbooks and training, training booklets and training aids for us to go and visit these hospitals, train the operators who would be using the machines, uh, in giving them everything, details on how everything worked, not just this is the programme you use to wash endoscopes, but the legislation regarding why we use this programme and not another programme, why we do this, why we do that, and then they're enabled to use the machine. What actually happened afterwards was that there was less call-outs. The engineers were being called out less, we as trainers were being called out less, and the customer was happy. The knock-on effect for the customer, the hospital, the NHS provider, whoever it may be, what this meant was that there was less um, downtime of the machines. What that means is more machines were running all of the time. What is testament to our company is that all of the hospitals who have our machines and who have since had a JAG audit have all passed with flying colours. Every year many lives are lost because of the spread of infection in hospitals. We hope this programme has been a valuable resource for healthcare professionals and will help them to take the first step towards preventing the spread of infectious diseases.
I'm Georgina Burnett and you've been watching Infection Control – Effective Decontamination Procedures.